Whittock Manor, a house of the ascetic movement, is the legacy of a family's passion for Victorian art and design. Taking inspiration from a lecture in 1884 on The House Beautiful by Oscar Wilde, Theodore Mander and his wife Flora decorated the manor house's interiors with the designs of William Morris and his arts and crafts contemporaries, including Kemp Glass and De Morgan's Lusterware. Oscar Wilde said, you will want a joyous wallpaper on the wall, full of flowers and pleasing designs. The ceiling should be broken up in texture, so that the lights may constantly play upon it. If you have big windows, let a portion of them be stained glass. Whittock Manor celebrates the art and creativity of romantic rule breakers working in the mid to late 1800s. Dante and Christina Rossetti, May Morris, Evelyn de Morgan and Simeon Solomon. Whittock Manor's Honeysuckle Room contains 10 examples of Simeon Solomon's artwork. Solomon, a painter, was controversial by Victorian standards. He was gay, Jewish and suffered with mental health problems. And this made him vulnerable to prejudice and discrimination. Dante Rossetti, artist and poet, co-founded the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood and largely influenced the second wave of Pre-Raphaelite artists. Christina Rossetti, Dante's sister, who was more famous than her brother in her lifetime, wrote poetry that included erotic female-to-female -female desire, hinting at her own sexual ambiguity. Many people consider that her best work is also her longest, Goblin Market, written in 1862, which was illustrated by her brother. Cheek to cheek and breast to breast, locked together in one nest. Did you miss me? Come and kiss me. Never mind my bruises. Hug me, kiss me, suck my juices. Squeeze from goblin fruits for you. Golden pulp and goblin dew. Eat me, drink me, love me. Laura, make much of me. Evelyn de Morgan was a member of the second wave of pre-Raphaelite artists. Despite the restrictions and prejudice she faced as a female artist, she exhibited to much critical acclaim at many major galleries. Among the widespread themes that her paintings explore is the role of women. Her muse was a female member of her household, Jane Hales, who is often depicted scantily clad or nude. Hales is now buried next to Evelyn and her husband in Brookwood Cemetery near Woking. May Morris was William Morris's youngest daughter. Aged 23, she took over the running of the embroidery department at Morris & Co. Whittock houses both embroidery and artworks by May. In June 1937, they discussed a forthcoming visit. The visitor's book entry states, May Morris, Kelmscott, June 20, 1937. Motored over with Miss Lobb for tea. Mary Frances Vivian Lobb was a First World War Land Army girl. Miss Lobb's masculine attire and forthright manner were not in keeping with traditional ideals of what a woman should be. May Morris and Miss Lobb lived together for over 20 years until May's death in 1938. Thankfully, in Victorian Britain, female same-sex relationships did not arouse the same censure as their male equivalents and were never made illegal. However, women were expected to get married and have children. 
a woman who refused to conform with Victorian ideals of femininity and domesticity risked being declared insane and committed to an asylum. In 1895, Oscar Wilde was sent to prison for committing acts of gross indecency with male persons. It was in the courtroom that Wilde's chilling and resonant euphemism for homosexuality, the love that dare not speak its name, gained prominence. When questioned about its meaning, Wilde said, it is that deep spiritual affection that is as pure as it is perfect. It dictates and pervades great works of art. In 1873, Simeon Solomon was arrested in a public toilet in London for gross indecency and fined 100 pounds, the equivalent of approximately 10,000 pounds today. Simeon's public disgrace ruined his career. Many of his friends deserted him and galleries refused to show his work. Despite his arrest and subsequent imprisonment, Simeon Solomon continued to create beautiful androgynous art right up until his death in 1905. In his own words he said, Night, sleep, death and the stars, they are the themes that I love the best. He died in a workhouse in obscurity and in poverty at the age of 65. In January 2017, Oscar Wilde was among more than 50,000 men posthumously pardoned under the Turing Law, exonerating those convicted of sexual acts that would not be considered crimes today. LGBTQ charity Stonewall called the new law another important milestone of equality. The Manders of Whittock Manor had a passion for telling these artists' stories. Stories they continue to tell, inspired by their dedication and commitment. <laughs>